Are you ready for some incredible feats in magic, wizardry, and constantly setting yourself on fire? It's Noita! A game that I've been playing an awful lot lately, and that combined with the fact that one of the major developers is the same guy behind Baba Is You and Environmental Station Alpha made me think that I should at least do a small series on this. Uh, the reason that I haven't been doing it up until this point is that it is a huge game and very, very difficult. But you'll see that soon enough. Now, before I start anything else, let's reset all progress because there is a video that only plays the first time that you load up the game. Well, I hope that explains everything. By the way, don't worry about me resetting my progress. Progress in this game is minimal. <laughs> you get enemies, spells, perks, nothing you get to keep between any sort of any one of your runs. Although three secrets found, I thought I deleted everything in the persistent folder as well. Now, whatever, we'll see those secrets in time. All right, so the basics of being a Noita. Well, you just wazzy around, easy enough. Left click to fire off your wand, of which I have two wands right now. One has a couple spark bolts in it, which are the, they're, they're the, the worst spell in the entire game. They're, they're awful. It, it does barely any damage. It's, it's just something to get you started and virtually nothing else. There is some stuff that you could possibly do with variants on a spark bolt later, but as it is, uh, might want to dump this thing as soon as possible. Second wand, though, has some bombs in it and also some pretty good stats, but we'll get to that later. Now, there's only three of them in there, and you just fire them off, and, well, it shoots out a bomb. Destroys things very efficiently, but, to be honest, doesn't really destroy as much of the environment as you might want. Does not destroy very tough uh, objects, and that's why the, that and the fact you only have three of them might be getting rid of that soon enough for a little bit better digging implement eventually. Also, have a water flask. Water flask is, well, pretty simple. You can throw it, you can spray water around. It's going to be very important for preventing yourself from the aforementioned being on fire. <laughs> you used to not even start out with a water flask, but it was such an essential part to the game, like getting water on demand as soon as possible, that they just started to, they just start you out with one now. Also, kick things. Any sort of object falling on an enemy will do a lot of damage, so you might get some use out of it. I don't know. I generally not tend not to kick things a whole lot. I for inventory. Also press tab. And then one, two, five to switch between each one of your items. And aside from that, uh, keep close eye on your health. Health is important. <laughs> You're going to be losing a lot of it. Levitation energy. Yeah, the one thing that Noita can do by themselves is float. Careful and controlled floating is going to be an important part of not landing in fire all the time. Neat. Then you got one mana, and you can also see a little recharge bar here as soon as I use both of the spells that are currently slotted in this wand. Those are completely, like, negligible for right now, but later wands, later spells will be... You'll want to kind of keep a close eye on your mana and your recharge times. And before I get down to the mind, I should say, there is a lot of stuff even to do before you get into, like, the first area here. But I'm going to keep this nice and simple. So your basic goal is just to descend in this mountain and do something. You'll see eventually what I'm talking about. There is... Uh, the game is pretty light on plot, let's just say that. But there is something you are trying to accomplish by diving deep into this mine. 
Hopefully, we'll get to see what that is sooner than later. Oh, also watch out, because the bombs do a lot of damage to you as well. Here we go. First wand in the game. Much better, much better uh, magic to start with. Much better wand in general. Yeah. No. I, 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 when I said get rid of that thing as soon as possible, I was not kidding. And also an egg. Every single object in the game is going to be on one of these little uh, pedestals and... Stuff like wands are very apparent because they're always shining in the darkness at all points in time. Whereas like more minor things like extra flasks full of potions and the like will be less uh, important looking. I mean, they'll still shine, but not as much. To be honest, I know that thing was friendly to me. I wanted to get rid of it because I didn't want it to accidentally kill me. The Lamano Yasuka will... Uh, they explode into... Well, they don't explode, but they spew toxic sludge everywhere when whenever they get hit. So they're projectiles. So keeping them around, even if they are friendly, is generally not a great idea. Oh, also, yeah, I hope you like hearing me try to pronounce um, <laughs> the uh, Finnish names, because that's going to be happening quite a lot. Much like Noita, the Noita themselves, it is... This is a game made... Coming straight out of Helsinki, and everything has a name like that. Oh, come on. Where were you even at? I couldn't even see. Ugh, whatever. Anyway, the big goal here is to try to get some better wands. Getting something that does a lot, a lot of extra damage. You might remember the Spark Bolt did 3 damage. This does 10 damage. Bigger mana drain, but like, come on. The, the choice is clear. It also shoots about as fast as having two of these in the previous wand, because the wand stats are so much better. PC. So the main type of enemy you're going to be seeing here more than just about anything else are the Hisi. They're these like, from what I understand, they're like a goblins in Finnish, and they are pretty much the the major protector of the mines. For the most part, I'm only going to be seeing dudes that throw dynamite. Uh, Hisi that throw dynamite, and Hisi that throw. Oh sure, I'll take that. Get some more friendly enemies around here. Uh, he see that throw dynamite and he see that uh, shoot shotguns. And the ones that shoot shotguns are much, much more frustrating to deal with. Easiest way to fill up your potion, uh, to fill up any sort of flask is to just hold it out in water. I mean, for example, if I spray it here, it'll say it's only got 87% full. Now, back to 100%. And you can fill in, uh, and you can fill multiple things into a flask if you want. For example, if I get rid of some of this completely pointless potion, what does it do? It reverses your controls. Oh, how useful. Now you can see I got uh, water, blood, and flamoxium. And you know what? Here's what it looks like when you throw stuff, because again, it's that useless. <laughs> it reverses your controls. What am I gonna... That is actually a new potion that has come out in the latest patch here. If it has some kind of use, I don't know, <laughs> but... Reversing my controls is not anything that's going to be very good for me. Oh, yes. Also, spooning things into your mouth does make it so that you can eat corpses? Only if they're fresh. The Noita will not eat, uh, uh, like, slimy or things that are just, like, made of stone or something. Only fresh, delicious. Thanks for destroying my lava, by the way. <laughs> I guess I also have a flask full of fire here. Uh, anyway. Yeah, uh, so that's something. <laughs> I mean, aside from that, for the most part, the, the real thing here is just kind of stay off of areas of the ground where bad things are happening, like fire or potentially dangerous, like, magical solutions. Got a polymorphine is not actually all that dangerous, but it can be, depending on what you happen to turn into. What was that enemy even? Transforms you into a random enemy. Which can be anything from, like, endgame super boss type of, types of enemies to ducks. Quack, quack. Here, let's go one more. Ooh, this thing looks pretty cool. <laughs> no idea what it is. I don't even... There's a lot of enemies that I still don't really know anything about. Yeah, don't fear. You still have your levitation energy even when turned into a different type of creature entirely. Oh, this is kind of nice. All it does is light up your surroundings, but hey, that 
can actually be useful going around here. Getting pretty lucky with the amount of... The amount of wands that I've been finding just right off the bat here. I mean, in general, much like any sort of... Ro wow! Cool, cool, cool. Uh, much like any sort of roguelite, uh, just getting as much junk as possible and then kind of sorting it out over time is... Is the way to do this. And aside from that, as long as I can avoid taking damage as much as possible, that's going to be good. Yeah, there is stuff I can do with that, but I'm not going to worry about it too much right now. <laughs> Here we got some tablets, which... Tablets are pretty much just like a little bit of lore. They're, they're based off of a real... Well, a real world concept. I don't think that it, the emerald tablets of, of Toth actually exist. But it's not really lore that's going to be specifically about the game. You'll find them kind of uh, scattered around the world of Noita as you're going. And you, I mean, should be obvious why you want that. Does not fill up your health, though, which is disappointing. And yes, there is stuff that you can do with that lava lake over there. It's just not right now. <laughs> We're going to keep this simple and easy for now. It will be changed up. Uh, I'll, I'll be talking about some of the specific and crazy things that you can do eventually. One of the other nice things about having a lit up wand is that you can also light things on fire. Which is useful because one of the big gimmicks of this game is the idea that every single pixel is simulated. And there's a lot of interactions with stuff because every particle can do something. I don't really want to land in that in case I turn into something that might just die immediately. For example, there are enemies that are, you know, like fire elementals or whatever that will die if submerged in water. And if you transform into that <laughs> when you're right next to water, it's not good for you. All right, taking a look around here. Teleportadium, I'm sure you can probably guess what that does. Might jump into it anyway just to show it off, but uh Also, by the way, guys, thanks for just dist Oh my god. Ah. Ow, painful. Uh, by the way, guys, thanks for just absolutely destroying every single flask I come across. I need some of these things for, like, shenanigans later on. Not like Flamoxium, but, you know, teleportation can be useful in its own way. Get you out of a pinch. You can also get enemies submerged in that. Have them teleport around. Whiskey, eh? Ah, yes, you can just go in here and start drinking like crazy if you want. In fact, uh, one of the easiest ways to take out a huge amount of a solution that you're in at any point in time is to just be... Wait, what? That hurt me? I can't drink that much whiskey? Oh, I gotta tell you, I'm a little bit disappointed in the Noita's uh, constitution, really. But yeah, yeah. Filling up a flask at the same time that you're drinking a bunch of things is the best way to kind of get rid of stuff. Uh... There we go. That'll work. <laughs> and then burning that was kind of the best way to get rid of it. I want that health pickup, basically. Uh, so that also does um, bring about one of the other major mechanics in the game. Stains. Your your clothes get stained by any sort of objects, well, liquids that you find yourself in. And that's uh, alcohol, oil, uh, various potions. For example, like the pheromone flask. Getting the charm effect on me. And that is good in some ways. I would almost recommend getting yourself, uh, having your clothes wet at all points in time, because you can basically walk around in fire when you're wet, just at the cost of losing your wetness modifier, I guess. But it's also like, you know, being drenched in oil, being drenched in alcohol, you're extra flammable, being drenched in uh, booze also affects, I accidentally threw that. Whoops, my bad. You wanna, you wanna kind of pick and choose what you're drenched in a little bit. Blood increases your critical chance, so that's actually very nice to have. <sighs> Am I gonna die if I drink this fire flask? Yes. <laughs> Gotta... There's a lot of things that will end up with you taking damage constantly if you drink them. Slime. Uh, fire. <laughs> 
I don't know, a whiskey, apparently? Or maybe the whiskey was tainted with something. I don't know. Like I said, you can combine liquids very easily. And it's a little it's sometimes a little bit hard to tell if something is being combined. You know what? Let's let's just kinda show this off. We Oh no. <laughs> Teleport curse affects you. Which is, of course, needless to say, a problem. But, uh, there we go. Usually only does it a couple times. That said, I mean, you might be able to teleport yourself into some weird, difficult-to-get-to locations, potentially. But, it, for the most part, I'd like to say it's not tremendously useful. Also, the fact that you're teleporting around a whole lot means that it's hard to spoon that into... Uh... Hard to spoon that into any sort of... Boy, you just took that explosion like a champ. Or maybe there's more than one of you. Anyway... I can't spoon it into a flask. But the other thing here is that environmental kills, much like kicking stuff into enemies, you can also, say, take advantage of enemies' weaknesses. For example, the Stendari is clearly a fire elemental type of dude, and he will take damage constantly if got lick if he's got any sort of uh, any sort of water on him. Yeah, there's one of those shotgunner he see that I was talking about. <laughs> Watch out whenever you see those guys. Now, yeah, and the reason that you would really want to kill those guys via uh, water rather than just shooting them with your wand. I mean, first off, they got a lot of health. They, they can take quite a beating. But also, if you kill an enemy via environmental means, you know, kicking stuff on them killing them with explosions, everything like that. There we go. They drop double the amount of gold. And that is good, because you're going to need gold soon enough. Trust me. Jump down here. Jump down here. There's a lot of water. Yep, there we go. Yeah, killing Stendari with, uh, with water is actually a very easy way to get a lot of gold right at the start of the game. Especially because you do start with a water flask. It's not very easy to, like, kick objects onto enemies. Yeah. As you can see. But stuff like the tablets are big, heavy emerald tablets. And you can just throw them at enemies. And that's basically like kicking something onto them. Here, if I see another dude coming up here, another dude that I'm not going to die to, I might make an attempt there. Concentrated Mana Flask. I'm sure you can probably take a guess as to what that does. Yep. Get double gold that easy. So yeah, Concentrated Mana could be good. But like I said, mana costs are not really that big of a deal right now. Eventually I'm going to run out of it. But I don't think any enemy is going to take that much damage. And come out of it alive. Before I actually run out of mana. Ah... I... Watch out, because that bomb's not going to destroy steel. Too powerful. So yeah, just having a nice uh, look around the mines here. Two type of heesy that you're seeing right now. I was going to say, ah! Two type of heesy that you, you're seeing right now. The shotgun guys, the mining guys, are just here to, well, to basically protect the mine entrance. But you'll be seeing a lot more and a lot more frustrating types over time. As I get a little bit farther down into the the mine as it is. And in fact, I probably should be leaving pretty soon. I'm doing bad on health. And you do get a re health refresh in each one of the in-between areas. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the sort of heesy that throw uh, multi cocktails at you are also pretty rough guys. They're also totally immune to the fire, which, of course, why would they be throwing this thing if they weren't? Yeah. yeah okay. Don't want to get too oiled up there, but the blood thankfully protect me from starting on fire. I can't really take too many more hits. Y you know what? I am just going to leave right now. So the way you leave each one of the levels is just by going right down here. As soon as you get low enough in each one of the areas, you'll find one of these things. I mean, just a bunch of brickwork, which is immune to explosions, and then a portal deeper. These things just dot the surface of kind of the end area known as the Holy Mountain. 
jump in there. We'll get a nice little cistern full of water where you can fill up your flasks. Get a health refresh and get a potion, or er, spell refresher. So now I got uh, three of the bombs again. Also a nice shop here too. Ooh, some good stuff in this shop as well. Especially because I got plenty of gold to be able to buy a lot of this stuff. I think you're probably the one to go for. And the other thing that you get by being in the Holy Mountain is the ability to switch up your spells. Can't do this anywhere but here, except under specific circumstances. You can start to customize your wands, which is, of course, an incredibly important thing over the course of the game. And, you know, I did just pick up the spell refresher. I don't need that. What I do need, though, chainsaw. I mean, it might be good for digging meat, but it's also good for digging just about anything. And due to the fact that this wand has such a ridiculously low cast delay and recharge time, you just use it constantly. Can't dig through brickwork, though. However, it will do a number on enemies, and by a number, I mean they will be reduced to blood. <laughs> oh, it's some good stuff, trust me. And also, burning trail? You know what? Sure. Modifies one of the things to have a burning, well, as it says on the spell there. Which, hey, starting enemies on fire is not a bad thing at all, if you ask me. So I think now is probably about the point in time that I want to go over what exactly each one of these wands do. Because they got a lot of stats on them. So shuffle, basically, you want things not to be shuffled. Shuffled basically means that it casts any one of these things in any order. If you have it, like, not shuffled, then, for example, this burning trail will always affect this magic arrow. So... Whereas, if I were to do it up here in the same way, only about half of those are getting affected. And that is frustrating, but, you know, it's manageable if you got decent enough stats otherwise on the wand. Cast delay, recharge time, got the time before you can cast another one of the spells in the wand. Recharge time after you cast all the spells, the time it takes to recharge it. Mana max, mana charge. Each spell takes magic. It takes mana to use. And that's the amount of time that it takes to recharge said mana. Which, as you can see with the amount that I shoot off here, lose it pretty quickly, but the recharge time is also pretty good. Capacity, well, yeah, how many spells this can hold. Spread is, of course, the amount of degrees up or down. You can see I'm not shooting quite straight with every single one of those. I think if you have it at about like five degrees or less, it's not too bad, but I've seen like 30 degrees or more, and that can be rough to deal with. Spells cast is pretty self-explanatory too. It's the amount of spells cast at a time. However, every single time I see that, it always usually comes with the downside of having a pretty hefty recharge time on it. You can see the recharge time on this one, spells cast three is a second. If you have like spells cast eight, it can be up to, I don't know, like, um, three or four seconds. And when you're in the heat of a battle, that's not acceptable for the most part. Hmm. It's not too bad to have, though. All right, well, that's the basics on wands. And like I said, you can only get wands changed up in the in-between areas. You are going to be very useful coming up soon enough here. All right, then the other thing is we got perks. Perks are, well... Usually something very powerful to have over the course of a run. You can uh, re-roll the ones here. And you can only pick one each time you're going here. I want to say vampirism? Probably going to be the most useful. Why? Because good for digging meat. When you dig meat, that meat explodes into blood. And healing is at a huge premium in here. So that's good to have. And since there's, what, seven biomes total in the game, you can only get... A grand total of seven perks, unless you do some shenanigans. Technically, you can get an infinite amount of perks, but it's uh, difficult to do. And then when you leave here, this spell activates, destroying this area. I mean, you can actually dig your way back in here. Brickwork might be very sturdy when it's uh, in place, but as soon as it's out of place, 
you can just dig right through it. It becomes incredibly fragile. However, you can see these like little red dots around here. That means that the temple has been desecrated and will deal a lot of damage to you if you try to go back in there. Like, give it a couple seconds to cool down if you want to go back in. Unfortunately, the magic in general is gone, so you're not able to switch up your wands if you do happen to... Good. If you do happen to uh, get your way back in there. It's kind of frustrating, but hey, it's how the game goes. Get out of here. I have no respect for the Heesey's mining operation, by the way. Now, the thing is, you might think, well, that's all great and everything, but couldn't I just, you know, everything is still back up there. Of course, you know, the usual way that you go through a, a roguelite is that you're kind of going down one area to the next to the next. But you can still clearly see that that previous area is there. Is, ah, crap. It's like if you could dig through brickwork, couldn't you go back up to the previous areas? And the answer is yes. And the answer is that's going to be a big part of the game. <laughs> and if you have something that eats through all obstacles. But there's a reason why you might not want to do that. Let's just say that. And I certainly don't want to, at least for the time being. No, no, no. I want to just go a nice traditional route. We're just going to go through the game and get shot at by shotgunners. Also, stay away from those guys because they will... Yeah. Because they will um, also melee you to death. And they will melee you to death very quickly. Their melee is better than dynamite for some reason. <laughs> But yeah, 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 yeah. Traditional route through the game for right now. We'll start doing the special things. We'll start doing the weird things later. So yeah, the vampirism thing, here's what I'm talking about where it can be very, very powerful. Then all I gotta do is just use the spoon into mouth and just hopefully not get killed by Heesey that are shotgunning you from a distance. But yeah, good for digging meat. It's good for digging meat into just an absurd amount of blood. To the point that some tougher enemies will, in fact, uh, <laughs> drown you in blood before you're able to kill them with the, the chainsaw in a kind of frustrating way. This can be really powerful, to be honest. The only thing is that you have to sit here and just drink blood forever and be sure not to drown in blood. That would be an embarrassing death. I mean, it's like you can survive as long as you have some sort of source of, of enemies coming in, bleeding all over the place. It just takes so long. <laughs> but hey, like I was saying, this is a game that you're supposed to play kind of slow and carefully. And that works on any enemy, by the way. Get a bunch of slime here, too. Would not recommend getting slime. It's very obnoxious. Sure, it protects you from fire, but you also move so much slower. Ugh. Well, anyway, with some sort of digging implement, I can also do stuff like dig up into the areas, release a couple of the, the gold storages here. Maybe even... Yeah, <laughs> cool. Take out enemies that have to hit you in melee before they can even hit you. No, digging is a powerful thing. And I would say that if you're playing the game... One of the first things you want to get is some sort of consistent source of digging. And if you have this wand, I mean, it's the wand you start out with. It's, it's a perfect uh, match for any sort of digging implements that you're using. It lets you get a lot of gold if you're willing to spend the time going through here trying to get it. And also, if you find yourself happening to be locked off from exploring the entire level by a bunch of walls or whatever, just dig your way right through it. I mean, with everything being, as I said, like, simulate, every pixel simulated and everything like that, it is very important to have some way of getting through that. And the bombs are nice. You only get three bombs, though. Three bombs ain't enough. Gotta have more than that. Oh, and also, it is a chainsaw, so it digs through wood pretty easily, too. It doesn't dig through everything. Rock, for example, does take a second to go through, and like I was saying, it can't go through the brickwork or... Another uh, very tough type of thing. 
extremely dense rock. You're not you're gonna have no go with that. But for the for the most part, for the most like basic stuff, whether it's gunpowder like this says here, which by the way it says up here what each one of the objects I'm mousing over is. <laughs> Guess I didn't mention that. So it'll do you fine for digging. And it is also something that will be useful against a, any sort of enemies that you happen to come across. By the way, Toxic Sludge is cleansed by water, so... Would recommend, uh, recommend spraying water into that, because it just turns into more water. You see? Hey, a shop out in the wild. You don't really see a whole lot of these things. Not that any of this is very good. Drilling shot... Could be okay? I don't know, but I already got some way of digging right now. I'm not really hurting on it. Yes, instead of having to try to find some sort of alternate route route around there, dig right through it. Yeah, I, I would say that there is something of a... a like, a level of... A, oh, boy. Got another Noita down here. Well, I mean, not, like, literally a Noita, but... Effectively. <laughs> Are you kidding me? The Malyaska are being quite obnoxious and also just shooting an outrageous amount of stuff around here. Get all that toxic sludge out of there. Already, I've already taken enough damage from that. Okay, man. Drink some of this blood here real quick. Even though, like I was saying, I don't really want to <laughs> because it takes so long. Anywho, seeing a little bit tougher enemies means that I'm coming across the other part of this area, known as the Fungal Caverns, which have some powerful enemies, but also a lot of a lot of uh, wands and potions and everything like that in there. Thanks, Yaska. That's very nice of you, but also uh, I'm going to have to ask you to just get absolutely murdered right now. Ah, those explode into acid, so watch out. Oh, and I can't actually go get the the other mages stuff. Watch out for anything with a shield. They're not very friendly. Thankfully that uh what is it called? A robotica, I think. Oh, Lenoki. Is uh not very threatening, but can be a problem because of how they Refuse to take damage a lot of the time. Man, that is one fancy. Ah! Oh, oh no, that's just acceleradium, which allows you to move faster. Nice zoom in on here. Now, oh, what is this? Oh, I think it's concentrated mana. I'm not going to worry about it. No, I just want to go get down to the wand. Come on. Needless to say, you can't really. Yeah, concentrated mana. That's fine. Needless to say, you can't really, uh,. Dig through steel with a chainsaw. Eh. Eh. I mean, that recharge time is not great. Oh, I'm moving so fast. Which, I mean, you know, good and bad things sometimes. Ah! Do not want to get hit by those guys. Because the thing with those dudes is that they are... Each one of their spells has... Each one of these um, mage fellows that you're going to find are going to have some form of projectile that will do something special. I think that those guys specifically teleport you around, and I would really like to not have that happen. Yeah, taking damage here, but hey, at least I'm taking out these uh, wasps easy enough. Things are dangerous in here. The fungal caverns are dangerous, but the benefits are manifold. Okay, anybody else want to come down here? <laughs> Giga disc projectile. Now, when it says curious flight pattern, it means it boomerangs right back at you, right into your face. So, uh, watch out for that. There's like a nest up here or something, right? Yeah, there sure is. Get wrecked. Okay. I'm getting worried because the health is getting low and ah no not another Habano Yasuka. <laughs> That's teleporting around, which is bad for me. Insects don't really have blood, you know? 
So I do have to take a little bit of umbrage with the, uh, I don't know, maybe they do in, in Finland. <laughs> the acid. Acid is so dangerous. Acid will eat through pretty much anything, as you can see, and also deal a lot of damage on top of that. So I would really, really love to get this guy out of here if I possibly can. <laughs> The flammable gas it creates is not that big of a deal to to work with, but it's also still frightening nonetheless. Okay, again, as much as I don't really want to drink blood forever, it's like I, I kind of want to get a little bit more health right now. One of the few ways to heal in the game. There are like a... There's a couple ways to do it, but the way that you're mostly going to be healing is through go before there's anything that spawns. The way that you're mostly going to be healing is going to the in-between area, the uh, holy mountain areas, and... Yeah, going into the holy mountain areas, and then, uh... healing through that. Okay. You just gotta get rid of the rest of these dudes. And again, it's like, ugh. Vampirism is a blessing and a curse, because it's not going to make for very good television, but, you know, it does also heal you a lot. This is the point in time when I'm going to cut the video. Okay, and one full heal later. Oh, yeah. oh hey, look, it's an alchemist. I mean, first off, I'm going to kill that guy, because, whoa, boy, do I not really want to deal with his shenanigans. Uh... Alchemisti will, of course, throw a bunch of potions at you, and those potions can be quite deadly. Concentrated mana does seem like it could be pretty useful, but I'm not going to screw around. Also, yeah, I shouldn't have... Uh, when drinking all of that blood, I also did eat some uh, fungus, which you can see is maybe a little bit irritating. Oh no. Oh no. Those guys will freeze you. And that's bad. <laughs> Because it just leaves you as a sitting duck for other enemies around here. Ah! What is in between here that is kind of blocking off my way? Hey, you. Make me invisible. Uh, it's not working. Oh, well. <laughs> ah, I'm terrible. Oh, those guys. These guys are not terrible, but they will uh, hit you with tentacles doing an incredible amount of damage. That was an explosion. <laughs> well, time to drink more uh, blood, I guess. Uh, I, God, I really don't want to, though, because it does take forever, like I was saying. No, I just want to see if I can, can't find a good wand or some flasks down here before booking it out. This is exactly what I'm talking about, where... Uh, where, um, getting rid of... Where, where the ability to dig is very important. Yes, in the large version of those enemies, which are called Terso, I think? Yeah. It's Pico Terso, and then there's also regular Terso, which of these guys are. They don't lose the ability to do that, uh, close-range freezing. So, using my chainsaw is not a good idea. They also, on top of that, of course, gain the ability to... Oh, I could want that wand, but I don't want to deal with the turret, so... Uh, they also, on top of that, gain the ability to uh, hit you with tentacles. A lot. <laughs> For huge damage. What is this? Meat? Oh, well, source of blood, I guess. For as much as that's worth... Uh oh Because even rotten meat can still turn into a lot of blood over time. <laughs> It's just, again, it's a very net hack type of thing where the penalty for exploiting vampirism is that you have to sit there and exploit vampirism. At least there's a little bit of infighting going on, but that's not... It's cold comfort. Because those tentacles do a lot of damage. And also, there's you up there, which I also know is going to do just a ton of acid... I mean, it can only attack you in melee, but it also explodes into acid when it dies, so that's bad. 
One of the big things you want to watch out when it comes to Noita is the idea that an enemy will just pop out of nowhere and kill you. <laughs> it will happen. It has happened, and it will continue to happen over time. Trust me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what's this? Also, you do have to watch out because enemies will also take wands and try to use them against you. And if you have something like bombs all over the place or, or the like, that is something that is a cause for concern, to say the least. What is this? Yeah, because there are some items that I really want to get. Not only the digging, but I also want some more powerful digging to get through the brickwork that you find lining the the areas around the holy mountain. And also I guess I can get a new Oh. Oh. Wow. That's pretty good. Critical plus? Critical plus again? Water trail? I mean, water trails, you know, it leaves a trail of water as as you would think. It's just that's not bad at all. Okay. Okay, well, I think I'm going to have to switch out some of those spells, because what is even going on there? Ooh, health up. Very good. Especially having taken um, the vampirism. I kind of need something to buff up my health. That does take away a third of your... Ooh, crap. Come on down here. I told you their spells have some sort of special ability with it. This one is frustrating. But hey, if anything comes down, there, you're chainsaw. Chainsaw right to the face. I'll drown in blood before I die to you. Okay, try not to get hit by that guy again. And there's where that whole um, starting enemies on fire, the fire trail, really comes into play. Oh boy. Attack him. I hate you, you stupid Pico Terso. Like, why Why do you care so much about that guy? Yeah. Drown. 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 Do it. Do it now. There we go. Because that also counts as an environmental kill, so double extra gold on top of it. <laughs> and one of the things that happened in the, mo in the most... Uh, okay, not going to deal with you. One of the things that happened in the most recent update is that they added in um, large chunks of gold that are worth 50 it used to be that enemies, especially later on, and if you were killing them via environmental means, would just explode into so much gold that you couldn't, like, shoot around it or anything. There's some good stuff there, but not enough good stuff. And also, like, oh my god, the, the enemies are scary. The Terso, I don't like those guys. They do a lot of damage. Oh, well, there's a Berserkium. Pico Terso, same thing. Yeah, you know, like you couldn't shoot your way around the amount of gold that enemies would explode into. It was absurd. So now having a little bit more... Having a little bit more uh, uh, larger versions of gold I think is a bit better. And one of the things that I picked up was a a water trail on one of the, the wands that I got. And that's actually not a bad thing at all because enemies have trouble moving around in water. And you... And, you know... Ugh, gross. Um, enemies have trouble moving around in water and you, you know, obviously can have stuff like... You're not going to have as much problem dealing with Okay, I like that. You know, if you're you're not gonna have as much problem dealing with uh, fire as well as stuff like uh, the toxic sludge and the like, if you can just shoot water all over the place. Pheromone flask. I think I pretty much found everything that I want in this area. Get wrecked. <laughs> Chainsaw is quite good. It's not going to always be very effective. Uh, obviously, any sort of enemy that has a range attack is going to be able to counter you pretty well. But, you know, the, the idea that you can explode... It, you can take out most things pretty trivially in melee when you have a chainsaw on your side, to no surprise. Going to get a little bit extra health here, and then I'm going to book her on out, because 
I think I've pretty much fully explored this area, and I don't really want to deal with... You saw you saw the uh, the mage and how much damage that dude did to me. I don't really want to deal with that any more than I absolutely have to. No, I think this will be good for getting to the next area. Where? Hmm. There's some stuff there, but not enough for me to want to do anything. Uh. Good, good, good. Yeah, the next area is when it starts to get real. This is when you have to really start, um, you know, considering how you want to, like, set up your, uh, set up your spells and everything like that in total. So here, I mean, as much as I would like to, I want to get Critical Plus on here. I want to get these things out, because that's, not really helping me at all. Odd firebolt, same thing. Keep the fire. You know, magic missile, though. I'm looking at that right now, and I'm just... I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, wow, that could be much better with a triple cast. It, it, the recharge time is not even all that bad, like I was talking about. Triple cast, always cast, like 30% extra critical for pretty much everything I'm going to be shooting off. Sure, they have limited casts, but I mean, come on. How much does that really matter over time? And then, uh, I don't know, get some ability to do water. Just get water out here. Yeah. It can be useful in its own way. <laughs> I'm not going to take this just yet. There's nothing that I really have to refresh after all. Anything else? Anything else? Circle of Vigor is one of the few ways that you can heal yourself in the game. Outside of, you know, going into the in-between areas, but I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Extra maximum HP from hearts. There's some stuff there. All-seeing eye allows you to see pretty much everywhere at all points in time. Oh, what do I want? What do I want? I do like that. But I don't really think there's too many more hearts that I know of, at least consistent locations for. They'll appear around. Let's get all seeing eye. I think that's gonna be useful. Now past this point. Snowy Depths is the first, like, real problem area that you might come across. Because the enemies start getting very serious. The areas are very large and expansive, and these guys are here, which if I didn't do that, would have probably done a lot of damage to me. Anything else? Ah, also snipers. Yeah, the HCR are a lot more, um, hey, cool. Uh, hmm? Yeah, it's, uh, I'll consider it. Um, yeah, the HC, like I was saying, are, uh, more than meets the eye. They actually have some some real technology on their side, as it turns out. Gah. For example, sniper rifles. Well, hey, this is where vampirism comes in. Also, I didn't even notice, but I have a really good spread on that, too. It's, it's very low. Yeah, okay, so here's the thing. Noita, just in general, has maybe a little bit of a problem where normally when it comes to... Normally, when it comes to uh, a roguelite, or, you know, even roguelikes, there's like a power curve. Basically, as you get farther and farther into the game, you become more and more powerful, whereas the enemies build up linearly. Noita does not have that. Enemies also build up... Oh, boy. I will take this. And there's going to be a reason for it, but uh, it's also very spooky to look at. Now, yeah, enemies in Noita do not quite have that same thing. They also build up in a very huge fashion. Health gets crazy. And you need to start responding in kind. This is very much a game where you want to make sure that you are 
dealing a ton of damage because you're also going to be taking it due to the frustrating enemies that are appearing and the ridiculously huge amount of health that they eventually get. Get down here. Yeah. That's what you get. That's what you get. Oh, so stuff like this is actually not bad because I have a lot of pretty powerful items in the form of... I have a lot of pretty powerful items in the form of the... Yeah, there we go. The magic missiles. I have some consistent way of doing a little bit of healing with the vampirism. And probably more importantly than anything else, I got a way to do a lot, a lot, a lot of criticals. Criticals are maybe the way that you're going to get the most damage in the game because a critical hit on an enemy does something like three times damage. It's huge. It's absolutely enormous when you get a critical hit on an enemy. And getting a critical hit like 30% of the time when I fire off three spells as it is, is uh, quite good. <laughs> and that's going to be the sort of thing that's, that'll carry me into fighting some of the more powerful enemies as the Heesees start to get jetpacks and sniper rifles and the like. Uh, don't, don't, um, don't discount those guys. They are, they are quite powerful dudes. That third egg, as you saw in the intro birth technology into the world and it seems like the Heesey are the ones that mostly got it all right well first off cool miss second off there you go so like 200 damage there but then do you see how much damage i took that's why i got this huge huge pool of blood around here the Heesey, at least one of the nice things about them is that they do bleed blood <laughs> not everything is so kind as to do that Really, you should be thanking these these horrible goblin creatures. Okay. Actually, I'm running out of shots on this a little bit more than I thought I would. Oh, well. I'd say it's worth it, <laughs> as it turns out. Watch out for these guys. Because this freezing vapor will do a lot of damage to you over time. And you really want to watch out for that. Also rises, which is a little bit frustrating. And much like there was a fungal caverns in the previous area, here we get the magical temple. Oh god. <laughs> that is a... That is an ambulatory... Um, that is evidently an ambulatory uh, wand. Probably want to watch out for that, since wands can have literally anything on them. Or spe spell-wise. Also, as you can see... Oh, you drop the... Well, uh, I don't think it dropped the wand. Oh, no! <laughs> Anybody else want to come and pick that up? These guys look a lot like the cypher demons in... In the, uh... The outpost of Environmental Station Alpha. I believe they're called, like, Kalmas. Yeah, I can look at them right here. Yeah, Spiral Kalma. Spirali Kalma? I don't know. Get wrecked. Now, let's go see what this... Oh, man. I am glad that I got a pretty good wand here. <laughs> Like I said, it's the critical damage combined with the fact that it's a powerful spell combined with the fact that it's, it's just a good wand. Come on. Oh no, have I run out of spells? Ah, no. Ah, well, yeah, I guess that's fine. As you can see, the damage has gone down quite a bit. Uh, anything of interest? I kind of like homing shot. Is there anything I don't want to get rid of though? Nope. Boy, do I not want to die to this guy. By the way, all-seeing eye is helping a lot here. Normally, this area is super, super difficult to see in. Okay. <laughs> hey, Chainsaw, just because these things are, like, like death entities... Hi. Oh, okay. <laughs> just because these things are, like, death entities, that doesn't mean that they're any less vulnerable to... Chainsaw to the face. If anything, I'll call them more vulnerable to chainsaw to the face. Anyway, let's switch around these wands because uh, it's frustrating that I can't um can't really do much of anything about that anymore. 
Boy, all-seeing eye is so useful. It gets real dark in here. And the ability to just see everything is incredibly useful. Oh, boy. I don't like this stuff at all. Yeah. Just... What? Oh. I guess that's polymorph magic. Strange. <laughs> um, anyway. It's gonna change back into the thing, maybe. Come on. Come on. A little bit of chainsaw. Knew it. Knew it was gonna happen. That polymorph magic is pretty powerful. Oh, that's frustrating. And then the melee took me out. If I got something more powerful, if I transformed to something more powerful, it would have been totally fine.